uh, how would you explain my like behavior or demeanor as like a child? Like, was I easygoing? Um, Definitely not easygoing. <laughs> no, you were. I I really feel like you always had a very strong personality, mm. and and you you definitely exhibited that from a very young age because you you were absolutely beautiful. You were born with a full head of hair, <laughs> um, and you were a beautiful child. And people were drawn to you because you were so attractive, and they would approach you and you would scowl at them, like literally growl. Hiss at them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> like no, get away <laughs> from me. I just me. didn't want anyone touching me. You didn't want anybody near you. Yeah. D yes. I kind of feel the same way. Like that guy at the gym this morning, I was just like, oh, God, leave me alone. <laughs> like, God. I'm like, you guys think I'm so outgoing whenever I'm here with my camera. And I am outgoing, but I also feel like I do. I mean, once you get stuff. to know somebody, you're certainly different. But this yeah. is like out at a restaurant when somebody tries to, you know, Oh, my God, she's so cute. Something. And you're like, <laughs> just like what? stay away. <laughs> like, you have to claw them. <laughs> but you were always very leery of people and very concerned about your brother and sister. Like you, we couldn't get on an elevator oh without it being a whole ordeal. You blocking the door, making sure everybody's in safe. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I was so scared of elevators as a kid. And I remember so going scared. to Ocean City, right? Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Um, you were so scared of losing, losing track somebody, of your brother or sister. Like they would be missing. left outside the door that you just couldn't handle. Why was I so worried about that? I don't I know. know. Like, was it just me being like, I guess like a possessive kid over them? Just like trying to you make just, like, yeah, always, watching their every move. Always watching always their every concerned, move. Always concerned, yeah. Yeah. Mm, sounds stressful. Stressing <laughs> me out. Like, I probably, though, whenever I have kids one day, I'm probably going to be like that just too. By just the time like we had micromanaging. Three, and you pretty much just took care of it. We weren't necessarily yeah. too worried. <laughs> we didn't have to worry about we anything. We were in the, in the elevator hitting the down button. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would have everything covered, That's like right. shuffling them through. Yeah. We didn't have a whole lot to do. So then I, I guess, obviously, as a brother, I was super um, protective initially. So then I, I growing up, like elementary school, Middle school, I remember I started getting into, like, making videos. I mean, I was pretty young. Do you remember that little green camcorder I had mm -hmm. when I first got, like... I still have it. <laughs> yeah, like, it's an old camera from... I remember I would, like, try to set it up to, like, film the Easter Bunny or something. You, to you see did if it was get weird. me yeah. making <laughs> yeah. Easter baskets. I did do it. Absolutely. Um, so that was... Uh, you know, I was, I guess, creative in that way. I don't think I'm, I don't consider myself a very creative person, especially when you meet like these actors, theater people, artists, like people who can actually paint, you know, like I'm. Oh, it, you were very creative. But uh, I guess. But then what did you, I mean, you saw me making videos in like, you know, the seventh grade, filming Delaney, doing these random right. things. Um, what did you think of it back then? I mean, did you just think it was like a normal kid thing to do for? Mm -hmm. No, I thought, I definitely thought you were destined for something creative in your life. I mean, you. You took an initiative and wanted to be in plays, so you mm -hmm. auditioned for musicals that were through one of the, the larger high schools around us. And, I mean, closed auditions, you went in there and just killed it. You got everything you ever wanted to do. I mean, you, <laughs> you just and, – and I was mortified because I couldn't go in with you, and I'm like, what's going on? You were like 10 <laughs> years old. We had to get you a cell phone because you yeah. had to go to auditions or, or to – Rehearsals. And yeah, I was the only one in fifth grade that had a phone because yeah. um, I would go to these day, the acting days. It'd be like a Saturday yeah. and be full all, all day. day. Long. I remember also being ten years old and like having to go and buy lunch for myself at the burger place and just it was <laughs> such a weird yeah. thing, you know. Yeah. Crazy. But the older kids are like some. It was like a yeah. program where it was like a bunch of different ages, but there was like people who are eighteen or so, and so they would take care of me and make sure I was like, you know, safe. Safe. <laughs> walking to the place, yeah, you know, right. safely because right. I would not have to go outside and. The city and do that. You also started swimming when you were six years old. So you swam for a good... I was like 18, really. Yeah, I mean, a, a very long time. You did competitive swimming, you and your sister. And we're very good. And that was because of you, right? You grew up doing competitive I swimming. I swam, yes. But, you know, it was... I felt like it was a great sport for you all, and it definitely taught you discipline. Yeah, I mean, I think it helped also with fitness, too. It just gave mm -hmm. you a good base fit. Like... When I was in, you know, high school, I had like abs just because we were doing so much dry land and right. yeah, swimming, definitely. club swim, high school swim, yep. county swim. Luckily, I have been thankful that my family has been super accepting with my sexuality, especially with, um, you know, how it was 10, 15 years ago. It was not easy and I came out pretty young. So I think that it's important to acknowledge that because there are families out there who, you know, accept you and will... Um, want to embrace that side of you. I mean, my family, we've gone to drag brunch already. I mean, they're out in West Hollywood. We saw Erica Jane last night. My mom got a picture of Tom Sandoval. Like, you know, they're here with, here for the queer or whatever. And I think that really goes back to some of the past that my parents have experienced with, like, my uncle and things like that. And my dad had a 
you know, exposure to a gay man early on in his life. Can you talk a little bit about like Uncle Steven? And absolutely. Like, do you think that did kind of prepare you to accept me easier? It, it absolutely. It changed. Uh, it changed our life. I mean, we, I grew up in a very small town. She's you know? your older brother, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And um, grew up in a very small town, almost like nothing around us but kind of farms and things and uh-huh. is know, that fairfax virginia that mm-hmm. was center well fairfax but then it's fairfax Central. county but back then it was so it, it was really land. was not built up right? no, it was so no, built up centerville now. was okay. really really uh, small and that's when um that's when he came out you know whenever we realized it and, and graham told us and things uh so uh, graham told you and he i told believe graham? that's probably how it played out yeah, yeah. i mean I, I think we always had maybe a little bit of a different uh idea that you know because he was he was a fun guy. I mean, he just a such a, a sweetheart of a person. Um, uh, always thought about somebody else. I mean, it reminds me so much of you because you always put a lot of people in front of you and things. And 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 he was the same way. And um, and what time? Like, just not in review, but when when he came out, what time period was this? Because I feel like we. He came out too. Is such a crucial. I was probably time. I was in the eighties. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was thirteen. When, mm-hmm. Whenever, uh, oh, when you found out, that I realized, yeah, yeah, so. that was in the late. 70s, Do you remember when you heard about it? Because I feel like I remember. I don't know if this story is true because obviously I've heard this years ago. Mm-hmm. But like my understanding was that when you heard that Uncle Stephen was gay, it was so like overwhelming to you, like just accept that you like, ran and you were crying and like in the. It like, was. It was definitely. Do you it, remember it that was, moment you found it, out? Like your reaction, like you felt like. I do because I was, you know, I was just, I don't know. I kind of felt sad a little bit just because, you know, I don't know why. I don't yeah. know why it affected me. I, I honestly, up until that point, I'd never had associated or met, you know, anybody that was gay. Not, there just wasn't anybody around. I probably mm-hmm. did. They just weren't out. Um, but, but yeah, uh, but Steve was just such a great personality. So mm-hmm. it, it really, you know, there, there might have been that initial kind of shock if you want to say that uh but but it it really changed um shortly after that because he included me in his life mm-hmm. you know and it, he actually took me to my first gay bar and yeah, stuff like that funny. you know when i was um, underage you know yeah. but uh he he opened my eyes to uh to realize hey man this isn't uh these people aren't uh, weird. They're not the devil. You know what yeah. I mean? This isn't, you know, I grew up in a, a, a fairly Christian Graham home, has always know? been super, like, end of the faith. So yeah, like yeah. That. And it was. And I, I did a year at Christian school and things. So, it, you know, they, they definitely kind of beat that up a little bit um, and, and made you Especially back think then. a certain way. Right. They, they wanted you to think a certain way. But uh, actually, after after Steve came out and, and we started to enjoy ourselves out, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, it was just always a uh, inspiration and 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 yeah i think it, it it totally helped me with uh uh you know if i needed help whenever whenever you came out it was mm-hmm. just a you know a, a, exposure yeah no it was yeah 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 so um unfortunately i never met my uncle steve he passed away from each of yeah. Yeah. yeah which one do you use if he passed away from it was it aids H- okay AIDS. so he passed away of aids which i think is important to highlight because you know luckily we have prep nowadays and you know, the community has become very aware. I know back then it was such a struggle to oh be gosh. sick. I mean, you guys, I remember towards the end of his life, you guys took care of him. Mom mm-hmm. would go and get his haircuts mm-hmm. for him. And take you would, shopping and, and I remember mom, you told me like you would, you would even lie about like what he's going through because people, people are so ask. judgmental, right? Oh, it was horrible. Yeah, yeah. They would look at him like, Oh, what's, what's he got? And I, I would never, you know, I didn't feel it was anybody's right to know. Mm-hmm. And he was certainly safe and not putting anybody in jeopardy. So it, you know, Nobody needed to know that. Yeah. And so he was living in Germany with his partner until he fell ill Very enough Ill. to where he had to come here. And that was for, do you know why his partner didn't take care of him? The health care was better here. Oh, so he yeah. came yeah. here for better treatment. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So then you, then did he live with like Graham or did he live with like, with and Graham. then you guys would go and help Graham with taking well, care I of him? Well, I lived there at that time. So, oh, you did? Uh, yeah. And it was, oh, it you was were diff- dating, right? Yeah. That's right. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was very difficult because I, you know, your uncle was 230 pounds and just built. I mean, you know, he was very proud of his physique and he worked very hard on it. Um, and just to kind of see how this horrible disease takes over you. He was 125 pounds laying yeah. in bed and, yeah. and we literally changed him and, you know, and, and had to make sure we, you know, moved him around so he didn't get bed sores. It was, it was, heartbreaking I yeah mean, it was just a very difficult time but uh he still always wanted to go out and see the cherry blossoms and yeah, we took, we him, took down him to see the cherry <laughs> yeah, blossoms yeah. yeah so but uh very difficult time that time yeah and that's why now my brother has the middle name steve to honor 
yep. Uncle Steve. Yeah. And his, we're still his, talking actually, about his today. first name is Steven. Steven. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, you, my, all you boys go by yeah, your Steven middle name. Steven Jared. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I'm Michael Sloan, Sloan after yeah. dad. Um, so then obviously like that kind of experience made it easier for when I came out, even, even, even despite coming out at like 15, which is pretty young. I thought you were 14. 14. I know. I was 14. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I, was, I knew for many, 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 many years, but mm-hmm. I wanted you to come to me with it and I didn't want to go to you with it, but I had went to your dad for many, many years prior to that and said, mm-hmm. yeah, I think he, I think he's gay. Your dad, yeah, <laughs> Let's play it out. Saying, I think yeah. he's gay. Like, Kind of, let's play it out you know? <laughs> um, but yeah so a lot of people were asking about my coming out story so I thought I might as well share it thank you for watching this clip from the let's get into a podcast to view the full episode visit the link listed below